Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is October 8th, 1955, and the title is Good Girl, Bad Company. Let's get into it, and thanks for listening. Gunsmoke, brought to you by L&M Filters. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L&M. Superior taste. Superior filter. America's best filter tip cigarette. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Don't you open the door? Maybe you'll find out, Justin. I never heard of nobody knocking on this door before. It's Major Harris, Mr. Dillon, from Fort Dodge. Uh, come in, Major. Marshal Dillon. Sit down, sit down. I'll stand, thanks. Marshal, last Saturday, two United States Army soldiers were murdered while driving a supply wagon from here to Fort Dodge. Government payroll was stolen. You seem to have taken no interest whatsoever in the matter. Well, now, Major, protecting the Army isn't exactly my job. The Army can protect itself, Marshal. Then how come there were only two soldiers carrying your payroll? Where was the rest of your Army? On maneuvers. On maneuvers? In my command, troops remain in garrison as little as possible. And you were asking for trouble, Major, knowing there was a payroll coming in. Marshal, the arrival of the payroll was secret. Even the two men carrying it didn't know what it was. Somebody knew. Yes, they did. Marshal, I regard this crime as a demonstration of your inability to control these Dodge City ruffians. What? I mean it. And if no arrests are made in the matter, I'll give these bad men of yours a taste of martial law. We'll see how they like that. Now, wait a minute, this Major. This town will be patrolled 24 hours a day. Look, Major, you don't know these men. You run the army in here and they'll fight. There'll be trouble. Bad trouble. They brought it on themselves. No. You made a mistake and you've got to find somebody to blame it on. I want whoever committed those murders. And I want that money, Marshal, within a week. And if any more crimes are committed against the Army meantime, we'll take this town over at once. Good day, gentlemen. Hello, Matt. Evening, Kitty. Marshal Dillon, Jenny. Matt, this is Jenny Lane. Ah, uh, how do you do, Jenny? Pleased to meet you, Marshal. Sit down, Matt. Ah. Uh, you're new in Dodge, aren't you, Jenny? Oh, I've been here most a month now. Oh, she's only been working at the Long Branch about a week, Matt. Ah, uh, how do you like it? Fine, but I'm kind of worried now. Oh? It's this army business everybody's talking about. Will it be bad, Marshal? Yeah, it could be. You think it'll happen? Might, especially if there's any more trouble. Say, Jenny... Has your corporal been in? Yeah, he was, earlier. Well, how do the soldiers feel about all this? Huh, well, he says they sure aren't anxious to mix it with all these gunmen and buffalo hunters and the like. Huh. But he's not my corporal, Kitty. He's just a lonely kid. Huh, he's not so lonely. He spends more time here than he does at the fort. 
How does he manage it, anyway? Well, they made him a clerk, a sort of a bookkeeper. His time's pretty much his own. Well, he's lucky. Good, safe job, too. Yeah, I suppose it is. <laughs> well, I... I better get busy. I'm glad to have met you, Marshal. Glad to have met you, Jenny. I'll see you again. Sure. Nice girl. Mm-hmm. Where's she from, Kitty? Uh, hey, City, last. Huh. What, uh, what's the name of this corporal who's been sniffing around? Stark. Corporal Stark's all I ever heard. Now, what else do you know about Jenny, huh? Mm. She doesn't talk much about herself, man. Well, uh... Maybe you can get her to, huh? All right. I'll try. Meantime, I'm going to wire the sheriff in Hayes City. He might know something. You must have some reason for all this interest, Matt. No, I haven't, Kitty. But I might find a reason before I'm through. Today, your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day, superior taste and filter. It's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M superior taste and filter. Superior taste from tobaccos especially selected for filter smoking. Tobaccos that are richer, tastier. Light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is white, pure white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M tobaccos, it actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Next time you buy cigarettes, look for the big red letters L&M. Smoke L&M filters. America's best filter tip cigarette. L&M's got everything. Get L&M today. I got it, Mr. Dillon. Just come in. Oh, uh, what? The answer to that telegraph you sent to Hay City last night. Oh? Uh-huh. Here. Oh, uh-huh. thanks. I don't know what it says or anything. Yeah. Jenny Lane left Hayes about a month ago with a stranger called Nate Brand. Nothing against girl, but believe Brand a wild one. Regards, Clint Adams. I never heard of no Nate Brand. No, neither have I. What's she doing, hiding him somewhere? Oh, uh, Matt. Yeah, what is it, Doc? Trouble. Oh, what kind of trouble? A shooting. Out behind the Texas Trail. What? It's bad, Matt. It's real bad. Well, the shooting's always bad, Doc. Yes, but this one's going to lead to a lot more shooting. Somebody just killed a soldier. <laughs> Come, there's no crowd around here. There isn't a man in sight. No. Uh-huh. Who told you about this, Doc? The bartender. He said he heard a shot and went out back and found him. He sure looks dead, all right. He's dead. Is that all the bartender had to say? That's about all. Except that when he went back into the saloon and told everybody there about it, they, they didn't move a hair. Well, I guess maybe they was thinking about the army taking over Dodge. Yes, Why didn't the bartender come to me first? Well, I don't know, Matt, but I've got the feeling that maybe nobody knows whether you're going to be on their side or, or the army's. Yeah, they never do trust me, do they? Chester. Chester. Give Doc a hand here. I'm riding out to Fort Dodge. <laughs> Hello, Major. What brings you to Fort Dodge, Marshal? Murder. 
What? Murder. A soldier? Uh Uh-huh. Who? I don't know. Some private. Dodge City, of course. That's right. Have you arrested the murderer? Nobody saw it happen, Major. I see. (laughs) Well, Marshal, you leave me no choice. Wait a minute, Major. I didn't ride out here just to bring you the news. I want something from you. From me? I want you to keep all the soldiers out of Dodge for the next 48 hours. Put it off limits. That's not exactly what I had in mind. Listen, Major, Dodge City's an armed camp. It's full of men who fought Indians, who fought the war between the states, who fought each other ever since they could spit. They'll fight you next. They'll make you hate it. They can't fight the army. They can and they will. And a lot of men will die on both sides. But I'll make you a deal, Major. A deal? You give me 48 hours and I'll find your killers. You better take it. Because it'll get you out of a lot of trouble. All right. But I want the criminals delivered here. To me. Sure. But I might have to kill them to get them here. Matt! Oh, Matt! Ah, hello, Doc. I've been waiting for you to get back. Oh, anything more happened? Not yet, but I found a letter on that soldier. His name was Ravitch. Oh, anything else? Yes. I dug the bullet out of him, Matt. And you know something? I haven't seen lead like that since I mustered out in 65. Oh, what do you mean, Doc? That soldier was shot with a cavalry pistol. He was? I'd swear to it. Thanks, Doc. I'll see you later. Well, well, now, where are you going? Into the Long Branch. I want to talk to a friend of mine. I've been expecting you, Matt. Oh, uh, have you, Kitty? Just, it was in a while ago. He told me about that telegram from Hay City. Look, Kitty, i got to work fast. There's going to be a war around here soon. I found out a couple of interesting things, Matt. One is, Jenny's been seen riding horseback at night towards the Arkansas, down by Brandy Bend. Oh? It might have something to do with that man she left Hay City with, Nate Brand. Yeah. I think he's hiding out down near Brandy Bend. Any idea why? Corporal Stark and Jenny went for a ride one night. When was that? The night before that army payroll was robbed. Uh-huh. Where's Jenny now, Kitty? Over at Delmonico's having supper. Kitty. What? I'm the only one who can ever thank you for it, but uh, I think you just saved an awful lot of lives. Evening, Jenny. Well, hello, Marshal. Won't you sit down? You, uh, sure Corporal Stark won't mind? <laughs> Don't be silly. Besides, he's out at the fort. Now, when did you see him last? Oh, about noon, I guess. Uh-huh. Anybody with him? Private Ravage. Uh, Corporal Stark didn't shoot him, Marshal. They were good friends. They worked together in the bookkeeping office. I see. That's a pretty good job, isn't it? Handling expenses, figuring out the payroll, things like that. Oh, I, I don't know. He never talked about it much. Also, he'd be in a good spot to know when to expect payroll money in, wouldn't he? Even when it was kept secret? You'd have to ask him, Marshal. But, uh, <laughs> this isn't why you found me here, is it? No, of course not, Jenny. I'm sorry. Yeah, you look, uh, real pretty tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Marshal. You really mean that? Sure. Right? Sure, I mean it. Uh, Marshal, I have to work late tonight, but uh, I can get off tomorrow. I know it's bold of me, but couldn't we uh, maybe take a ride together? There'll be a moon. Oh, uh, where would we ride to, Jenny? Oh, I don't know. Anywhere. Maybe down along the Arkansas. I know. Let's ride down toward Brandy Bend. All right, Jenny. We'll ride down toward Brandy Bend. <laughs> Now.
Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M superior taste and filter. Superior taste from tobaccos especially selected for filter smoking. Tobaccos that are richer, tastier. Light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is white, pure white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M tobaccos, it actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Next time you buy cigarettes, look for the big red letters L&M. Smoke L&M filters. America's best filter tip cigarette. L&M's got everything. Get L&M today. The idea of a moonlight ride by the river with as pretty a girl as Jenny Lane was fine. Except that it was going to end with a man dead. Either me or her friend, Nate Brand. She was obviously leading me into an ambush. And there wasn't a thing I could do but go cheerfully along. I met her the next night. We started out. But a mile or so before we got to Brandy Bend, I pulled up and suggested we dismount and let the horses blow a little. They won't run away, will they? The horses? No. Oh, don't worry. Ah, here's a good place to sit. What's the matter? Are you nervous, Jenny? No. No, of course not. Ah, sit down. Take it easy, then. All right. This better? Sure. Yeah, it's a nice night, isn't it? Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> You're not even looking at it. Something on your mind, Jenny? No, why should there be? Why, you tell me. That's nothing, Marshal. Really. Let me ask you something, Jenny. Did you ever see a man killed? What? Why'd you say that? What, did you? Yeah, once in the saloon. Uh, tell me, did he uh, have a fair chance? Of course, he even drew first. Then you never saw a man shot in the back or uh, ambushed, huh? What are you driving at, Marshal? Oh, I'm just thinking about people, Jenny. Like, sometimes a person isn't really bad. He just falls into bad company. What's that got to do with me? And I think it sort of goes against your grain, the idea of a man being killed without a fair chance. Why'd you come with me, Marshal? Somebody had to. I suppose you know about everything. I think Private Ravage got killed by Corporal Stark because he found out about the payroll deal between you and Stark and Nate Brand. Sure. Well, what are you going to do now? Going to ride to Brandy Bend with you. But why? Because I'm gambling that you're still decent enough inside to let me have that fair chance I was talking about. That's quite a gamble, Marshal. Yeah. But we'll ride slow. And you'll have a little time to think about it. make a nice camp down here. Plenty of wood. Get your water right out of the river there. It's real nice, don't you think, Jenny? Man could hide out real easy down here. Marshal. I could be safe here, even while the army was trying to move into Dodge, and a lot of men were being killed over it. Yeah, it's real peaceful down here. Marshal, I can't do it. All right, tell me, Jenny. That big cottonwood up ahead. On the left. Okay. Now, keep moving. When we get close, I'm going to ride ahead fast. You stay back out of gunfire. 
All right. Yeah, it sure is pretty down here, Jenny. Maybe someday we can come down and go fishing, huh? Oh, this river's full of catfish. You ever eat a real catfish dinner? That can be mighty good if we're small enough. All right, stay back, Jenny. Jenny! Jenny! He's dead, Jenny. Oh, God, no. I had to do it. I know. I'll be all right, Marshal. Sure. He killed your horse. I'll show you where he hid his and the payroll money. Okay, Jenny. Then you can take me back to jail. Yeah. But there's one thing, Jenny. What you did tonight's going to get you out of jail real soon. Because I'm going to see you get your chance, too. Now our star, William Conrad. I'm telling you, the day you change to L&M, well, that's the day. Your big red letter day. No filter stacks up with L&M's pure white miracle tip. And I know you'll go for L&M's taste, superior taste you get from L&M's superior tobaccos. Richer, tastier tobaccos. Next time, look for those big red letters on the L&M pack. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Stop! Start smoking with a smile. With Chesterfield, smoother, cooler, milder, Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Chesterfield's best for you, they satisfy. If you want tomorrow's better cigarette today, next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfields made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. Recently, many of your cards and letters have requested an evening time for Gunsmoke Radio. In response to these requests, the makers of Chesterfield and l and Filters will now also bring you Gunsmoke every Sunday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So now you can take your choice and hear Gunsmoke transcribed at the time that is most convenient, either on Sunday evenings or Saturday at this time. And remember, the makers of Chesterfield and l and Filters also present Gunsmoke for your enjoyment on television. Tonight, watch an entirely different Gunsmoke show on the CBS Television Network. Check your local TV listings for time and channel.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.